Ancient Inuit oral traditions were employed as the most important method of conveying and preserving ideas, augmented sometimes by small carvings. Inuit myths are embedded with behavioral codes that may only be fully understood by those living within that society. The stories reinforce a close relationship with all of nature, as well as the belief that animals have the magical power to hear and understand human words. A fundamental tenet of Inuit mythology is the belief in other worlds, beneath the sea, inside the earth, and in the sky, where some gifted shamans have the power to journey in trances and in dreams, visiting places that ordinary mortals would only experience in the afterlife. They designated the powers of good and evil to deities living in a spirit world closely entwined with the starkly beautiful northern landscape. Inuit oral stories are short, dramatic forms dealing with the wonders of the world, the creation, the heavens, birth, love, hunting, and sharing food, respect for the aged, polygamy, murder, infanticide, incest, death, and the mystery of the afterlife. These stories are narratives used to explain characters, experiences, or phenomena, or religious or spiritual importance that are illustrative of the Inuit community's belief system. All stories are passed from generation to generation and are comprised of old stories and very old stories. The traditional stories convey a body of knowledge and unique cultural insights of Inuit into the workings of nature, human, and animals. And the methods of the storyteller are deemed as important as the information that he or she is trying to convey. The stories of Sedna are prolific throughout the Arctic and there are many different versions told by the Inuit today, depending on the region. Each of the versions tell of a young woman who becomes the mother of all sea creatures. As the sea goddess, Sedna has dominion over creatures and controls the availability of seal, walrus, fish, whale, and other sea animals to Inuit hunters. The following narrative is a compilation of many of these stories, and this is how it goes. A long time ago, before my ancestors were here, and before yours were too, in a land far, far to the north, covered in snow and ice and a frozen ocean, there was a village of Inuit that lived together and hunted together, and it was good, and life was good. And in the village, there was born a small girl to a family, and her mother and father loved her dearly, and she loved them too. And her father was a great hunter and provided well for the family. Her family always had plenty to eat and warm furs to wear and for blankets. And soon Sedna grew into a beautiful little girl who was strong and capable and funny and smart. Sedna loved her sisters and her mothers. And in this way she lived happily and grew into a beautiful, smart young woman. Her intelligence and beauty was known far and wide and many Inuit men desired to have Sedna for a wife, but she refused them all. And then one day across the ocean, an Inuit came paddling, and he was a beautiful man, and he promised her meat and furs and a good life, and so she agreed to marry him. And he took her away, and they traveled to his home on a very remote and cold and frigid island. And there she was with him as a husband and wife. And it was there that he revealed to her that he was not really a man at all, but a bird in man's clothing. Sedna was furious, but she had, she had no choice. She was stuck. He, of course, was no great hunter and could not provide her with meat and furs. All the bird man could catch was fish, and she got very tired of eating fish every day. She begged her animal friends to tell her father. Upon hearing the stories that the animals brought to him, Sedna's father decided to come and visit. Upon seeing that his daughter was so unhappy and that her husband had lied to her, he killed the bird man. The man's friends discovered what they had done, and they wanted to avenge the bird man's death. They flew above the kayak and flapped their wings very hard. The flapping of their wings resulted in a huge storm. Waves crashed over the small kayak, making it almost impossible to keep the boat upright. Sedna's father was so frightened that the storm would fill his kayak with water 
and that he would drown in the icy waters that he threw Sedna overboard. He thought that this would get the birds to stop flapping their wings, but of course it did not. Sedna did not want to be left in the water until she held tightly to the edge of her father's boat and would not let go. Fearing that she would tip him over, the father started cutting her fingers off one joint at a time. Still, Sedna would not let go until finally they were just bloody stumps where her hands were, and she had no choice and slowly sank into the water. Her bloody finger joints, different sea creatures were born. They became fish, seals, walruses, and whales. Sedna sank to the bottom of the ocean, and there she was transformed. It was a new day. She became a powerful spirit. Her home is now on the ocean floor. If you have seen her, you know she has the head and torso of a woman and the tail of a fish. She is the mother of the ocean. Sedna now controls all the animals of the sea. The Inuit who rely on these animals want to maintain a good relationship with Sedna so that she will continue to allow her animals to make themselves available to the hunters. Inuit have certain taboos that they must follow to keep Sedna happy. One of these says that when a seal is killed, it must be given a drink of fresh water, not salt water. If the hunters do not catch anything for a long time, the shaman will transform themselves into a fish, and in this new form, he or she will swim down to the bottom of the ocean to appease Sedna the sea goddess. The shaman will cover the tangles out of Sedna's hair and put it into braids. This makes her happy and soothes her anger, and perhaps it is because Sedna lost her fingers that she likes to have her hair gone and braided by someone else. When she is happy, she allows her animals to make themselves available to the hunters, and animals do not mind giving themselves up to provide food, clothes, and shelter for the Inuit. Here are some questions to consider. How easy was it for you to put away your Western European cultural lens? Were you okay with the story? Or were you shocked about the sacrifice of a daughter by her father? And who's to say that the mother, the life giver, isn't the only one that feels the pain of sacrifice? Doesn't the father as well, who loves his own children, doesn't he feel that pain? And isn't he responsible as a hunter for inflicting the pain? And Sedna herself, did she deserve the violence and the pain Or was this a a way that she could transform and become something different and something powerful and something amazing? Isn't she the spirit that lives on the bottom of the ocean and loves her sea animals? I think so.